I remember when I first got saved how desperately hungry I was. I just wanted it all now. You know what it's like. You know, you want to get there quicker, sooner, faster, easier, somehow absorb it all, take it all in. <coughs> well, for me, that's the way I was. I was one of those kind of people that wanted all of it. I'd see or hear about, you know, Bible study somewhere, and I'd go, oh, I gotta go. And I would do everything in my possible ability to get there. You know, and then I'd see things that cost money or, you know, like, you know, conferences or things, you know, or Bible schools that, once I found out how much they cost, I really couldn't go. You know, I'd go, oh, okay, oh, well, you know, bummer. And it made and created such a desire in me for just to find whatever I could that was the Word of God, that was powerful and and good, and that I would just suck it in, you know, so much so that I just thrived on what it was I was getting. It was kind of like my plants, you know, when I haven't watered them in a while, I know when I pour some water in, the roots go, shoot, and immediately some of my plants actually start putting out little blossoms and little things start to happen pretty fast. You know, the Bible says that as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You know, and a lot of people think of these things as kind of like a metaphor, you know, like a simile. They've never really seen a deer driving itself to find water. They've never seen someone so full of one obsession that they can't live without it. I've been that way. When I was wanting to get somewhere that taught the Word of God, I even got in my car and drove there and stayed. You know, it got cold. I got thrown out. <laughs> I got challenged <laughs> lots of ways. But I wanted it so bad that no matter what it took, I was hard after God. I pursued God with all my heart. I wanted Him to teach me. So I went wherever it was that I knew that there was stuff going on. Not just the hype, you know, not just all the bright lights and shining stars, you know, that you can see anytime you want to look down at Hollywood and look up in the sky and see all the lights flashing, you know, of somebody walking the red carpet. No. When I knew something touched my heart, ooh, when I knew something gripped my soul, oh, that's for me. When I knew that I heard God speak, I'm going there. Then I went. Because, you see, I heard like Chuck Smith on the radio one time and man I, I left where I was at and went there you know because I got saved one place but didn't get really fed and some people think well how could you not get fed at Calvary Chapel Riverside Great Glory <laughs> because it wasn't for me so when I went to Calvary Costa Mesa was actually down there I was constantly constantly going to all the studies every one of them and then because I was taking so much in, I wanted to do something about it. So I would participate in whatever volunteer things were going on. Because I wanted to know more. And really, a lot of your life is going to be determined by what you want and what you desire. You know, I read in the Bible something that really fit me, and it's true of my reputation at Calvary. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord. I was one of those people that maybe you can't see me when you pan the camera, you know, like with all the thousands, but after the service, Romaine threw me out. Yeah, because he was locking the doors, you know, and guess what? Somebody was still there, just sitting there just enjoying the presence of God, enjoying the beauty of His holiness. I liked being with people, but I liked being alone with God too. And so even after I got outside of 
being thrown out by Romain at times, <coughs> most of the time, though he wasn't in a hurry always to do so. I would sit outside on what we used to call the patio, you know, next to underneath the trees, you know, and just kind of sit there and enjoy the breeze and think about what was being taught. You see, I didn't just hear the word. I heard it and thought about it. I considered it. I pondered it and thought, hmm. And I'd look up extra references in the Bible and scriptures, you know, and kind of look and see. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, don't, I don't know about that, you know, it's kind of, what do you think, Lord? You know, so I always had that chance to really delve into it. You can do the same. But you see, only a hungry man looks for and has an appetite. Only a thirsty man really drinks deeply when he's dying of thirst. If you've been kind of like, you know, taking it in from everywhere, I don't think you're so thirsty, are you? You're kind of like fat and sassy and able to be brassy about everything in life. You know what it's like, you know, you're kind of like, you know, chugging along, you got an opinion about everything, it really doesn't make much sense, but you got an opinion anyways. You know, you're telling people what to do, you know, you're arguing with everyone, you know. You've got some kind of, you know, shtick that you think, oh, well, I've gotten away with it so far. Nobody's caught me in the act, so I can keep doing what I'm doing because nobody knows that I'm really not thirsty anymore. I have to look at, at times, what people say and what they do and how they are. And I wonder sometimes when they wander around kind of like roly-polies, you know, just kind of like lumbering through life, if they're really hungry for God anymore, if they're really thirsting after Him for Himself, if they really want to know God in a personal, intimate way, if they want to hear Him speak today. Because, you see, I'm desperate for not wanting to make the mistakes I may have made in the past. I'm earnest in wanting to seek after a better way to live my life. I'm choosing to want to clear out all the stuff in my life so that I'm not stuffed animals anymore, but rather kind of like lean, mean operating machine for God. Not fighting with other people, but operating in the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit walking in the newness of life, operating in the love of God, being moved by the peace that passes all understanding. <laughs> I'm not satisfied. If you are, I think you're missing the point. I think you may be just kind of like not cheap for the slaughter, but maybe fatted calves for the annihilation. I know that my Redeemer lives. If when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by His life. This man, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that comes unto God by him seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. Because I live, you shall live also. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Jesus risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. The Redeemer shall come to Zion and say unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace, you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 
The Spirit speaks expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Let the Word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Above all, take the shield of faith. With it you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Great peace have they which love your law, and nothing shall offend them. How sweet are your words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we preached unto you, let him be accursed. By grace are ye saved, and that not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. But rather, let us pursue after God than to seek after the things of the world.